Good evening, everyone, and welcome. The First Coast and Florida in the national spotlight for a controversial case. A 17 year old shot and killed, and police say it all started with a complaint over loud music. Well, from what police have gathered from witnesses, they believe that the confrontation began over loud music and ended with one person dead. They say that around 7.40 p.m., two cars were parked out here at the gate gas station at Old Bay Meadows Road and Southside Boulevard, and the victim is believed to have been in the red SUV over my shoulder, the suspect in a dark-colored sedan. They say the suspect fired multiple shots at the victim, who was also in the car with other juveniles. The victim was transported to Shands Hospital. He's described to be a young black male and he died on arrival to the hospital. Right now the police are searching for this suspect and the only thing they know right now is that he is a white male. Um, we have looked at some tape um, and we're not releasing what we found on that as of yet because the investigation is still kind of fresh but obviously if we get something or a suspect vehicle we'll, we'll be releasing that to try to get some people to uh, identify who this individual is. And the suspect now, they haven't identified the victim or given the age. Um, they do say that the juveniles were transported um, to be questioned about the incident. So all we know right now is that the suspect is a white male. Anybody who has any information is asked to call Crime Stoppers at one 845 tips In Southside, Michelle Casada, First Coast News. Michael Dunn pled not guilty in the murder and attempted murder charges filed against him. It's the first time anyone has seen him since he was arrested Saturday morning for reportedly shooting and killing 17-year-old Jordan Davis of Jacksonville. In court, his attorney, Robin Lemonitis, described Dunn's actions as self-defense. What we know is that once all the facts come out, what really happened is made known, that it will be very clear that Mr. Dunn acted responsibly and as any responsible firearms owner would have acted under these same circumstances. The Jacksonville Sheriff's Office says witnesses reported that an altercation between Michael Dunn and three teenagers, including Davis, at the Gate gas station on Southside Boulevard began over loud music. JSO says Dunn told police he felt threatened and shot eight or nine rounds at the car, striking the victim twice. Dunn's attorney says Dunn and his girlfriend, who she confirmed to be Rhonda Ruhr, were in Jacksonville for his son's wedding and stopped at the gas station on their way to their hotel. He gave her $20 to go in and buy a bottle of wine at, that they were just going to sit and, you know, play with the puppy and... and in a hotel room in Jacksonville? Yes, ma'am. She was in there, got the bottle of wine, and as she was coming toward the counter, she heard this commotion, this pop, pop, pop outside. That's when JSO says Dunn's girlfriend got in the car and the two sped away, with no explanation for why they left the scene. Dunn was arrested Saturday morning at his residence in Satellite Beach for a warrant out of Jacksonville. The Brevard County Sheriff's Office says he did not resist. In court, Dunn waived extradition and his attorney says he wants to be transported to Jacksonville to appear in court as soon as possible. Well, the judge get, uh, allows 72 hours and set a control date for 72 hours for the 29th. DJ, turn up the radio. Strawberry Letter 23 fills Ortega as car radios and stereos are turned up for Jordan Davis. Police say an altercation over loud music led to the death of the 17-year-old at a Southside gas station one week ago. At a visitation today, family and friends in Georgia said goodbye to the Wolfson High School student. The words are very special. The song was very special. Jordan Davis's attorney, John Phillips, was not able to attend today's visitation, but says the relationship is more than lawyer-client. They've been friends of, friends of the family, friends of that friend um, for 20 years. At a Toys for Tots fundraiser, Phillips dedicated time to Davis by turning up Strawberry Letter 23, a song picked by Davis's family. It's been characterized as, you know, loud music like a teenage thing or a, or a black white thing. I'm 37 years old, got gray in my beard, and when I'm driving around and I hear a song I like, I turn it up. Phillips says Davis's family liked the idea of turning up the music and can feel the support of friends and strangers. The family has been dragged into the media spotlight before they've even had the chance to bury their son. And the good is, you know, they're seeing where there's such an outpouring of love from so many different directions and there can be an opportunity to change things positively through this case, through this, through, through Jordan Davis's life and death. We don't have to accept, we don't have to stand by and watch 
more people be affected and more people dying because of it. Lucia McBath does not want any other family to have to go through the devastating pain that she is experiencing. Her only child, 17-year-old Jordan Davis, died after being shot during an argument at a Southside gas station that police say started over loud music. The former attorney for the man charged with Jordan's murder, Michael Dunn, said her client acted in self-defense when he felt threatened for his life. Attorney Robin Lemonitis claimed Dunn saw someone in the car Jordan was in flash a shotgun. Police say Jordan and his friends were not armed. It's like vigilantism. You know, anybody at any time can decide that they feel threatened and, you know, everyone's at arms. You know, everyone's bearing arms. Jordan's mom launched a new website Monday night that links to this online petition. She's pushing to get 25,000 signatures by January 1st. If that happens, the petition will be reviewed by White House staff and get an official response. You know, it's not just about Jordan. A lot of other people have died behind the, these laws. And, you know, Jordan is the, the blessed one because he has a voice. And nobody else has had a voice. And we can't just stand by and not do anything. Florida was the first in the nation to enact the law that justifies the use of deadly force if someone fears death or great bodily harm, regardless of where they are. It's a law that has Floridians split. I think the stand your ground law, I think it's a little bit over the top. I mean, being able to defend yourself is one thing, but killing somebody is a whole nother thing. I feel that there is too much um, of a gray area in there and it leads for things to happen like the incident of Jordan Davis or, or, or other incidents you know that have occurred where you can you can just use that as an excuse and tonight the fight to stop gun violence has taken Jordan Davis's parents to the nation's capital more than a month after their son was shot to death here in Jacksonville allegedly over loud music first Coast news Heather Crawford in the information center with more on their mission and what they plan to do now Heather Hi, Joy. Well, Jordan Davis' parents say they are not going away. They plan to do whatever they can to help prevent gun violence and to keep other families from having to endure nightmares like what they are going through. Tonight, they are in Washington, D.C., and they tell me that their focus right now is not on taking guns away, but rather on reforming gun laws to make them stricter. Shot at least twice, a Wolfson High student dead, and at least seven lives forever changed. Jordan Davis's death had an instant ripple effect. His mother left childless. His father left to bury his 17-year-old son. Three teens left with the horrifying images of seeing Jordan shot in the car where they sat following an argument outside of a Southside gas station. And Michael Dunn, a father himself, sent to jail, awaiting trial on a first-degree murder charge. All that changed in one night, November 23rd, Black Friday. Jordan and three friends allegedly accosted for playing loud music at this gate gas station. He was America's child too, you know, not just Florida, not just Jacksonville, but America's child. When you look at your 17 year old running around playing his music, playing loud music, running around with his buddies, he's your child, he's your nephew, he's your niece. Ron Davis and Jordan's mother Lucy McBath are speaking to lawmakers like Nancy Pelosi. They spent Wednesday afternoon on Capitol Hill in a congressional hearing on preventing gun violence. Meet with the superintendent of schools in Newtown, Connecticut, and others directly impacted by gun violence. They hope by putting a face on gun violence and sharing Jordan's story, lawmakers will be moved to take action and help prevent future tragedies all across the nation. When we get back uh, locally, we'll have to change uh, Florida laws. Uh, we have Mayor uh, Alvin Brown that I spoke to a few days ago, and he's going to take me to meet some other leaders. And so we're going to step it up in Florida because now that we have exposure from being in this briefing, we're going to definitely step it up. Now, I talked to Jordan Davis's mother tonight by telephone. She tells me that there is so much ground to cover that she plans to now focus her efforts in the nation's capital, working on reforming federal gun laws, while Jordan's father plans to spend his time here in Florida to change the state laws. Now, they both want to see the stand your ground laws in Florida and across the nation repealed. They tell me they are very encouraged by the congressional hearing today that they attended, where lawmakers are now recommend, recommending mandatory background checks on anyone who is 
is applying to purchase a gun. Live tonight in the Information Center, Heather Crawford, First Coast News. Heather, thank you. Meanwhile, the man charged with Jordan Davis's killing, Michael Dunn, is still behind bars tonight. He has pleaded not guilty and through his attorney has maintained he acted in self-defense. A pretrial hearing is set for February 6th. Jordan Davis was just 17 years old when he was shot to death in Jacksonville the day after Thanksgiving. 900 miles away in Houston, Texas, another 17 year old, Eddie Newbine Jr., a high school senior and aspiring filmmaker, heard about Davis's death and decided to take action. He created this Facebook page to raise awareness about what happened to a teen he never met. My heart really felt for Jordan and his family because he's my age. That could have been me. Could have been the one that got shot. The RIP Jordan Davis Facebook page, which is full of pictures and updates, took on a life of its own and now has more than 124,000 likes. Uh, it's just very encouraging. It's very encouraging for us because we know that Jordan's legacy lives on um, through someone young. We invited Davis's mother and father to come to our studios to meet Eddie Jr. and Senior face to face via Skype. Hi. Hi. How are you? Hi. It's such Hi. an honor and a privilege to talk with you and see you, Eddie. We're so excited for everything that you've done for us. It's really an honor. I can't believe I'm here right now with you guys. I mean, you single-handedly spearheaded a lot of what's been happening nationally for Jordan and for the campaign. And uh, we're just eternally grateful to you for that. This young man took something that was a negative and made it into a truly a great positive. And while Newbine continues to devote his time to this Facebook page, he hopes his effort will truly make a difference. My hope is for this crime and just violence to just stop. That's my main hope. In Jacksonville, Heather Crawford, First Coast News 1225.